This is the uh, third video in our series dealing with model calibration and in the last couple of videos we looked at how to uh, set up the boundary conditions for our two fire flows for this little example network and also how to assign uh, pipes to different calibration groups. Uh, in this video here what we'll look at is how to actually input the data associated with the calibration itself and the way that we do that is to go to the other data menu and then pull up the calibration menu and uh, what we have here are a series of uh, submenus that have been coded up specifically for a little example problem. Uh, before discussing these six basic menus here we will first look at some of the cells that we have at the top of the menu that are used to uh, basically set particular options with our calibration. Uh, the first input cell that we'll look at is this one right here, the attribute used for pipe type. Uh, the default entry here is a calibration group and uh, what we're telling the program here is uh, when we're referring to pipe types with regard to our roughness bounds uh, the pipe type number here will be associated with the calibration group number that we previously uh, assigned. The other cells that we have that we can look at uh, include the demand tolerance cell, the fire flow tolerance cell, and then the roughness calibration selection option. First we'll look at this uh, demand tolerance cell. Uh, this cell is provided to allow the user to specify calibration tolerance associated with the total system demand and when a non-zero value is specified the calibration algorithm will attempt to make adjustments to the total system demand within this specified tolerance and attempt to decrease the deviation between the observed and model predicted state values and in this case that would be the uh, pressures. Normally it will be expected that the tolerance will be zero that is the system demand is completely known however in some situations there may be some uncertainty associated with the system demand measurements and in that case the uncertainty may be taken into account uh, via this demand tolerance here. As an example if the user were to specify a, a total system demand of 1 million gallons per day in the original data and then specify a tolerance in this cell here say of uh, 5 percent, 5 percent, then the calibration algorithm would allow the total system demand then to vary between 0.95 MGD and 1.05 MGD during the calibration process. And so we'll try to use that uh, tolerance there to try to improve on our final calibration. Uh, the other cell we can look at briefly is the fire flow tolerance cell. This is very similar to the demand tolerance cell. Uh, in this case uh, we're able then to associate a tolerance with the observed fire flows. So the values that we're inputting these cells here we can also associate a plus or minus tolerance value. Again when a non-zero value is specified the calibration algorithm will attempt to make adjustments within this specified tolerance to any of these fire flow values uh, that we've specified. And again we'll try to do that to improve on our calibration. Implicit in an assignment of this number is that there is some variability or potential error perhaps in the observations that you've collected in the field with regard to these fire flows and, and with this cell you can explicitly take that into to, uh, consideration. The last thing we'll mention is this roughness calibration uh, menu here and uh, this is used to specify whether one wants to calibrate the pipe roughness coefficients which is what we would normally do uh, or you can also adjust individual aging factors. In order to determine the individual aging factors for an associated group of pipes the user must first specify the pipe roughness for each pipe in the regular pipe data uh, and this would be done on the basis of observed values 10 years ago. Uh, if you do that and then uh, select the aging adjustment factors option here uh, what the program will then do is to uh, calibrate C factors to match these observed conditions and then the program will then use the previous C factors 10 years ago and the new C factors here to come up with internal coefficients that the program can then use to project or predict C factors out in the future. So this option allows you to uh, calibrate your uh, 
C factors not only for the current condition but also build in uh, factors that can be used to predict uh, C factors in the future. Uh, normally, however, in most applications, people will be using just the adjust roughness coefficients option, the default, and that's the one that we'll be illustrating in this little example. All right, at this point, we'll stop and then pick up in the next video to discuss in detail each of these six different menus here.